Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be hooking up our three AEM gauges into our AQ1. What that means is we're going to be hooking up our three gauges via AEM net to our AQ1. This is actually a pretty simple installation that's going to allow us to data log all three of those gauges into our AQ1 so we can look at that data after the run is done which when it comes to the AFRs and so on and so forth and oil pressure and oil temperature we're gonna be able to gauge and see where we were at how we were doing and if we may need to make any changes to the car to make it so that it can actually be a little bit better when it comes to like the oil temperature gauge we're able to see what the spike is what the highest point is via the gauge being the fact that it has a high temp setup but you can click the button and it'll show you the highest temp um, with the oil pressure, it actually does the same thing, but it shows you the highest pressure. Now, in that case, you'd actually want to see the lowest pressure because that would be the most helpful situation, but we can't do that. So what we're going to do is hook that into AEM net, hook it to our AQ1, and then we're going to be able to watch our fluctuations of our oil pressure, as well as the most important gauge that I installed recently, which is our air-fuel ratio gauge. So then we're going to be able to watch the air-fuel ratio gauge and see where the air-fuel is at all times. Soon, I plan on installing an Aeromotive fuel pressure regulator. That way I can actually alter the fuel pressure so I can alter the air fuel ratio. More to that to come, but for now, we're gonna jump into this and see where we end up. So here are three AM gauges that we're gonna be connecting to our AQ1, which is back here. AM net is labeled on the wire here so all we got to do is take this and get this up to here so now we're gonna be putting some connectors on i got some wire got some connectors basically i'm looking for a four pin connector you can get the douche works or whatever the hell they're called connectors that are specifically made for this or you can just get any four pin connector it will work um actually eventually i'll go down to a two pin connector because i already wired up the gauges for power and the AEM wideband, you're not supposed to use the power provided by the AEQ1 because it draws a little bit more amperage for the heating of the actual element on the O2 sensor. So we have a four pin connector here. I'm going to be putting it on the end of this cable here. And then I'm going to put the other side on the other end, which is attached to AEQ1, which you already saw actually, so it's already there. Then I'm going to connect this all up and then we're going to be able to connect it to the gauges once I get some other connectors on the gauges. It's actually quite simple but I know it can be a little taxing to understand how it's all gonna work out. You can hear a little click indicating that it's all the way in. Except for when you don't hear it, because you're talking. And you push that in there, so now your pins are held there. Now, you have a good connector that someone forgot to put some heat shrink on. And then I have this connector here, which has the heat shrink on it. We're going to a two pin from three pin, or sorry. So from a four pin to a two pin, the other two are just dangling in here. Basically, this is the, the hot, and I don't feel like dealing with it, so I'm just gonna leave it in there. And there we go. So now, I'm gonna go connect it to the car, and then start connecting some gauges. So now I've run this from the AQ1 where I plugged it in up to the center console out through here. So now we're just finishing up with our last connector here under the dash, in the dash, center console, whatever you want to call it. Um, so now we're going to push the pins down again until you hear it click. Then our connectors are nice and seated. Now we're able to take what we got from the back from the AQ1. Connect it up through here. I'm gonna stow some extra wire back through here and then we'll be able to check out the AQ1 and see if it works. So one thing that's really cool, so I got it all hooked up. I basically came in, I turned on the laptop, I plugged it in the car, turned the key on, and then I went to the AEM net page and then went to auto discover 
And then as you can see here, it says the following devices have been found. So now it has been found and we reconfigured for these devices. Okay. So now our AFR is ready to be logged within our AQ1. Super simple, super easy. I really don't know if it could have been any easier. Um, probably the hardest thing was running it throughout the car. Um, but yeah, quick and easy. All right guys, so when I did the video, I didn't actually record the actual screen from the computer. So I'm gonna show you now. So all you're gonna do is once you get everything hooked up and you're actually trying to now set the, the AQ1 up to actually read your, AQ, your AEM net devices, now all you have to do is go into your AQ1, obviously I'm not connected at the moment, but you'll go into your AEM net suction, then you'll go into auto discover, you'll click auto discover here, then after you click that, you'll notice that they pop up here. Then you're gonna have to save your signals, you're gonna be able to see live data from that sensor if you have it on um, and have it streaming at the moment. Um, it's super easy, super easy, as you saw in the video. It took me about two seconds to accomplish. And then you have your new inputs all ready for you in AMNet. All right, guys, that's it from there. Now I'm going to give you some insights into what you're actually going to see on AM data with your new sensor. So as you can see here, I've already brought up a run that I did at Streets of Willow right after I installed all of this. So one thing I want to note to you guys when you first plug this in, you're gonna get this. You're, this, you're gonna get these three right here, lambda, oxygen, percent, and ready. So ready, just indicating that it's actually the sensor is good and ready. Um, the oxygen content percent, I really don't know what that is. Um, and AFR one, lambda, that is your air fuel ratio. Now, most of us don't deal in lambda here, at least in the US. So we usually go off of air fuel ratio, um, the standard setting that we are used to kind of like what it says over here now all you have to do is do a quick simple math and then you're gonna be set up for that all you have to do is go up here to data go to edit math personally I have it set up right here they have some tables you can go into you can add any of the functions here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go add then we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom to our new sensor so you're gonna insert the lambda then you're going to multiply that by 14.7 and then you'll click apply. Once you click apply, then once you get out of this, I didn't actually want to do it, so we're not going to do any of that. And so then it's going to pop up and it's going to give you your latest one that you just created, which is a math channel, as you can indicate here by the little math sign. So then you'll be able to drag this over to here which I already have obviously and now you'll have your air fuel ratio ready to go so the air fuel ratio is obviously in white our GPS speed is in yellow since I don't have a tachometer hooked up to the AQ1 yet which I do plan to do um, I just have to use the speed so I know that when I'm going on this back straight away all I'm doing is full throttle the entire time never letting off the gas except for right about here where I shift and you can kind of see what happens here is it leans out quite heavily as you can see just based on the shift no big deal no worries no care so what we're really going to focus on is our air fuel ratio here as i climb through the rpms as you can see here from the moment that i went full throttle which is about right here it was about 13 to 1 and it's in the lower end ranges of revs. I don't rev this car extraordinarily high. It is just a play toy and I wanna keep it around for a while. So as you can see here, as I start even getting into a little bit of revs, um, it starts richening up and it starts to richen up to a point as we get in the higher RPMs, probably optimus, the optimal RPMs for this car are probably right about here. And as you can tell, it gets really, really rich. As seen about right here, we're in the 10.9 to one ratio. So for me, I think I'm gonna lean the car a little bit more with my Aeromotive fuel pressure regulator to see if it'll gain a little bit in the top end as it does seem to get exponentially rich. Now, the interesting bit is if I had more data, which I really I want the revs, if I had more data, I could really make better decisions based on this. 
So what does that tell me? I want more data. All right, guys, that's it for today. Hope you had fun and learned something. Okay, guys, so that was a pretty good success with a little bit of failure. I actually didn't remember that the two oil, pre or oil pressure and oil temperature gauges didn't have AM net associated with them. So in the next video, what we'll be doing is we'll be actually hooking up our oil temperature and oil pressure sensor into our AQ1. As I mentioned in the video, the AM gauges that I have currently aren't pinned on the connector side for AM net. So in my next video, I'm going to be showing you how to take those gauges and quickly pin them for AM net so you can then put them into any logger such as the AQ1 or the CD7 dash or something like that using AM net. It's really simple, really quick, uh, but just one of those things that if I tell you, you'd probably think it's really difficult and probably not want to do it. But if I show you, you'll know how easy it is. And especially if you didn't have the gauge installed already, you'd quickly just slap it together and put it in the car and be ready to go. I'm gonna make a little alteration. I'm gonna set this up for the track this weekend. And then I'm gonna come back and set it up where I can actually log oil pressure and oil temperature as well as the AFRs that I'm already logging now. As you can see, the AFR gauge and logging of the AFRs is actually pretty simple. Um, it was pretty easy, pretty painless as a whole, and we can add on more later on if we wanted to. Granted, I don't know what else I would actually want in this car to log, but you never know. I never knew I'd be logging AFRs in the first place. So we'll go from here, get some more things wired up, and be good to go. Show you a little bit more about what you can do with your AQ1 and your AEM gauges. Have a good one, guys.